Hello, readers and writers, and welcome to lesson 25 of your ELA School Away From School. I am Mr. Driver, and I'll be your virtual teacher for today's daily lesson. Let's start with some guiding questions. What journey does food take before it gets to your plate? And how do you make decisions about what we eat? We'll continue looking at these essential questions as we continue exploring the same topic. All right, time to get some materials for today's lesson. You're going to need your copy of the text, Grass-Fed Cattle Take Slower Path to Market, Filling Small Consumer Niche, your copy of lesson number 25, the lesson number 25 note catcher, as well as a pencil. Go ahead and pause the video here and make sure you have everything needed for today. We have two learning targets for today's work. I can determine the central idea of an informational text, and I can cite text-based evidence that provides the strongest support for my analysis of the text. Remember the central message is a big idea that the author wants you to understand and take away from reading a text. And whenever you cite text-based evidence, you are just trying to find evidence or even a quote, um, direct words coming from an article in support of your message or main idea. Let's make sure we keep these targets in mind during all of our work today. First, we'll do a close read on our article, Grass-Fed Cattle Take Slower Path to Market, Filling a Small Consumer Niche. As I read aloud the article, please follow along with your eyes on the words that are being spoken. Take a moment to get your article out. It is important to hear the article read in its entirety before we start to examine it section by section. Feel free to pause the video or replay it as needed. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Grass-fed cattle take slower path to market, filling small consumer niche. Image. David Strong, age 79, is a retired Brevard Seminole Circuit judge and president of Deep Creek Farm in DeLeon Springs, Florida. He raises a grass-fed cattle and sells the meat directly to consumers. DeLeon Springs, Florida, cow number 150. Her pregnant belly bulging nosed around rancher David Strong's pickup. She was hoping to find something good to eat in the bed of the truck. For decades, Strong's family raised cows, lambs, and pigs on this lakeside property about 40 miles north of Orlando, Florida. But when his father died in 2002, Strong shifted the family business to grass-fed cattle, eventually eliminating the other animals. Strong loves a good steak, but he insists on knowing what or knowing that the creature it came from led the best life possible. No antibiotics or hormones used. That means no antibiotics or hormones to help cattle grow bigger, faster, and with more muscle and protein. It also means no grain and no confinement. These guys enjoy our pastures, the lakes, Strawn 79 said recently as he gave a tour of his Deep Creek Ranch. They get gentle treatment. Their bad moments are very short at the end. Advocates of grass-fed meat say it is leaner and contains a higher percentage of healthful fats, vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants. It also has fewer calories. The American Grass-Fed Association, which was formed in 2003, says the meat is better for the environment, provides jobs in rural communities, and is kinder to the cattle, goats, sheep, and bison destined to wind up on a dinner plate. Those animals that are raised in a pen are the cow equivalent of a couch potato, said Strawn, a retired judge. Beef producers defend feedlots. Not everyone agrees. The National Cattlemen's Beef Association represents beef producers. The group defends the use of feedlots where cattle are fattened on grain in their final months after an initial diet of grass. The animals receive individual attention from veterinarians and nutritionists and are protected from predators, spokesman Darren Williams said. The association and a meat scientist at the University of Florida also say the supposedly superior nutritional benefits of grass-fed beef are overblown. There's little definitive data to suggest grass-fed beef is healthier for you, said Chad Carr, a professor in the university's Department of Animal Sciences. Both are an excellent source of dietary protein. Grass-fed meat, more expensive. One thing is clear, grass-fed meat usually is more expensive sometimes twice as much per pound. That's because small producers need more pasture land. They also have higher operating costs than large commercial farms because as farms scale up, they can buy equipment and food at cheaper prices and reduce both their cost per cow and the number of workers needed per cow. Grass-fed cattle also grow to slaughter weight more slowly and yield less meat, requiring higher prices to make a profit, according to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. It takes at least two and sometimes more than three years for grass-fed cattle to fat. That's compared to 15 to 18 months for commercial cattle, 
said Marilyn Noble, a spokeswoman for the American Grass-Fed Association. At Strawn's 700-acre ranch, each of the 150 or so animals eats about 25 pounds a day of pesticide-free grass, sorghum, millet, and clover. In winter, hay and alfalfa are added to their diet. Standards not well-defined. No one is sure what percentage of the market grass-fed has captured, partly because it has no universally accepted definition. Estimates range from less than 2% to 5%. Not all brands are certified by the American Grass-Fed Association, which has strict requirements. Deep Creek Ranch is not. In past years, before the grass-fed cert certification was available, the ranch was certified humane, Strawn said. The operation would qualify for both certifications, he said. But in semi-retirement, he wants to avoid the complications of paperwork. To qualify, animals must be fed only grass and grazed for food from the time they are weaned from their mothers until they are slaughtered. They must never be confined to feedlots or be given antibiotics or growth hormones. They must be born and raised on U.S. family farms. The USDA's definition is less strict. Grass-fed meat has grown more popular in the past few years among consumers concerned about health, animal welfare, and farm-to-table eating, said Emily Rankin, owner of Local Roots Farm Store in Orlando. Farmers sell directly to consumers. Elementary school teacher Erica Meyer has been buying grass-fed beef from Deep Creek Ranch for several years and said it's worth the long trip from her home. This month, she split a 935-pound cow with several other families who shared the $2,571 cost. Meyer freezes her portion and makes dog food out of the tongue, liver, and heart for her German shepherd mix, Buddy. She picks up her meat, already packaged, at a small slaughterhouse. Strawn used to sell to restaurants in South Florida, but he decided to scale back and deal directly with private parties only, getting to know his customers and advising them on cuts of meat. Strawn's love of the business extends to preserving the pine, oak, and palmetto trees and the deer, wild turkeys and fox squirrels that share the lane with the cows, steers, and bulls. I really like growing things, said Strawn, whose boyhood jobs on the ranch were to drive mules and wagons and slaughter cattle. I like caring for things. It takes some people a while to get used to the firmer texture and reduced fat that the grass-fed beef often has, but Meyer said it is delicious and she feels healthier since she and her family have been eating it. We need to keep our money in the community, said Meyer, a mother of a 10-year-old and a 12-year-old. We need to help the local farmer and we need to do what's right for the animals. Now that you've had a chance to read the text, I want you to think about a few questions. What is this article mainly about? What extra information does the title, subheadings, and pictures give you? What was the most important piece of information you read? Pause the video here as you think of each of these questions. Now it's time to have a discussion with your family member, caregiver, or friend. Remember the central message is the big idea that the author wants you to understand and take away from reading a text. What do you think the central message of this article is? What details from the text make you think that? What new information did you learn? Go ahead and pause the video here while you discuss these. Please take out your lesson number 25 note catcher. Using the lesson number 25 note catcher, write down the central idea of the text. Use at least two details to support your initial response. Remember, whenever it's time to find the central message, of or central idea of the text, a lot of times you read the title and the subheadings, and then even also read the first paragraph and the last paragraph. Often a thesis or kind of like a main idea sentence will be found in those paragraphs, but also you can learn a lot just from reading the picture or looking at the pictures, reading the title and the subheadings to see what each section is supposed to be about. Go ahead and pause the video here while you complete this work. Time to wrap up today's lesson. Let's think about how you did with today's learning targets. I can determine the central idea of an informational text, and I can cite text-based evidence that provides the strongest support for my analysis of the text. As a closing, share your writing with someone and tell them why you chose to write what you did. Also, remember to read a book today for 20 minutes. You can also read with a family member, caregiver, or a friend. I also want you to practice your fluency by reading the article from today for one minute. You can also use a timer or have someone count to 60. After one minute, count the words you read and then write the number at the top of your text. 
Later in the week, we will do this again to see how much you've improved. Thanks for learning with me today. Tomorrow for lesson 26, we will dive deeper into the first half of this week's article so we can better understand it. Have a great rest of your day.